I love open source content. Free alternatives to popular software like GIMP to Photoshop or Blender to Maya help users avoid high price points and licensing issues. Not to mention, there's usually collaborative communities behind them. I just found a new open source piece of software called Open3D Engine, or O3DE for short. It's licensed under Apache 2.0, and it's actually a successor to Amazon Lumberyard, which was a game engine based on Crytek's CryEngine. Lumberyard was an internal product that Amazon was working on, but they switched gears in 2021 to become contributors of an open source project developed by the Open3D Foundation, which is a subsidiary of the Linux Foundation. And there are some big names partner with the project, such as Microsoft, Adobe, Huawei, and Intel. One of the things about open source projects is that they require support from the community in particular. So hopefully this video will call a little bit more attention to it. Either way, it's off to a great start. If you're familiar with using a game engine like Unity, then you can make the transition to O3DE. It's got systems for animation, physics, networking, and gives you a photorealistic renderer. It also supports both a visual scripting language and the Lua programming language. And the cool thing is you don't have to make a choice between the two. You can use either or in the same project. There are some hefty hardware requirements, such as a quad-core processor, at least a GeForce 1060, and 8 gigs of RAM. But just keep in mind that it truly is free, and it's not a beginner's game engine like Roblox Studio, or is it a freemium product like Unity or Unreal? I mean, you don't even need an account to use this thing. The developers themselves provide a great deal of support. They have a YouTube channel with a bunch of tutorials, which I'm basically condensing down for this video. But before we get up and running, I want to make a few notes about installing the program. Uh, now, I'll be using Windows 10 in this video, and um, obviously it works for me. Um, but there is a helpful guide that I'll link to in the description that goes through all of the installation steps. Uh, but basically what it comes down to is that you want to get Microsoft Visual Studio. I used uh, version 2019, uh, the community edition that you don't need to make an account for. Just make sure that when you're installing it, you include the workloads game development and desktop development with C++. Otherwise, the engine won't really work. I found that out the hard way. You'll also want to install Visual C++ Redistributable and CMake. Hopefully your installation goes well, because it's time to do a little hands-on. Okay, this is the first screen that you see when you load up the program. And what I'm going to do is show you some of the basics of how it works, and in particular, how to move a 3D object when you push the up arrow. And the first thing you're going to want to do is click New Project and Create New Project. Give your project a folder and name and click Configure Gems. There's a variety of different quote-unquote gems to pick from, and they basically give you different engine capabilities. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that you have the primitive assets ena enabled. And I don't believe it's necessary for this particular tutorial, but go ahead and turn on the input gems, the starting point movement in particular. Go back to the main screen and click Create Project, and it'll prompt you to rebuild, so click OK. And then under the drop-down, you want to Build Now and Confirm. When it's finished, go ahead and click Open Editor on the particular project. And this will take a couple of minutes, but when it finally loads up, you'll have the chance to create what they call a level, which is kind of like a scene in Unity. So give it a name and click OK. And when I did this for the tutorial, I had some errors. And you can see down here with the jobs, there's some pending ones. So I waited for them to finish, but ultimately I reopened the project, created a new level, gave it a new name, and, and then it worked perfectly. So this is basically what it looks like. Uh, it reminds me of Unity. You got your assets over here on the left and components of each asset on the right and when they're selected. So you'll feel right at home if you're used to using Unity. In the Outliner panel, right-click and click Create Entity, which gives us an asset. And you want to add the Mesh component to it. And click the folder 
and go down to the Primitive Assets folder and select the cylinder shape. Change the color by adding a material component and under the drop down click Edit Material Instance and there's a little button to change the color. Let's change it to whatever color you want, click OK and close the prompts. And you should have a shape. You can drag it around and click Z to zoom up on it. Next I'm going to move over to the Asset Editor and add an input binding. So I want to add an event to this. I'll call it My Event Input. And I'll click the plus there and make sure the class is set to Input Event Map. And then under the generator, you want to have it set to Keyboard. And the, the key should be set to the up arrow. Or whatever you want it to be. Um, but go ahead and click File, Save to save it. And I called it My Event Input and saved it. Then what we want to do is add another component, a script canvas. So for this, you click the little up arrow, and that will open the script canvas itself. This is basically visual coding. So first thing you're going to want to do is save this file. I called it movement script and clicked save. And then we want to link this particular script to the particular component. So go down and type in the name of the the saved script canvas and then reopen it. Now we can start adding some nodes. So go down under the entity, game entity, drop down and drag over an on entity activated node. Next, under the input category, drag over an input handler. And you can drag them around to you know make them organized. And drag over the output of one to the input of the other. And then go ahead and add a string variable. Give it a name. I call it my input uh, handler. Once you have the name in, change the initial value to from component. Then drag the string into the uh, event name portion. Then we want to go down to math and vector three and drag over a from values node and organize it visually again. By the way, if you've made it this far, chances are you like this video and drag the input held into the in of the from values and the input value to the y of the from values. Now we want to add another node. So under entity transform, drag over the move entity node. Organize it visually if you want to. And on the from values, you want to drag the out to the in of the move entity. And then the result you want to connect to the offset of the move entity. So these are the four nodes that we need. These are how they should be set up. So save the script and close the window and then add an input to the entity that we added before and connect it to the key binding file. Finally, you want to copy the name of the input event that we created and paste it into the variable for uh, on the script canvas component. And when you're ready, click the play button and the up arrow on your keyboard should move the entity that we created. And you can see that it was going way too fast there. So we can slow it down by going over to the input binding and change the event value to 0.1. And once you quick click play after doing that, you'll see that it'll move much slower. So basically, hello world. There you have it, the Open 3D Engine. I love it. I hope you love it too. Um, we're definitely in the early days of this program, so hopefully videos like this will help it to grow and grow, and it will become a staple in the development community. Thanks for watching this video today. If you want to learn more about topics like these, feel free to subscribe and I will see you next time.